it's Karen with the Yes Please Paper Crafts and this video is part of the Let's Get Organized YouTube Pop where each month we focus in on different items or areas in our craft room and we share tips and ideas on how to store and organize those items. So for the month of October we're focusing on bulky embellishments and this has got to be one of the most challenging things to organize in your craft room especially if you're a paper crafter. And so um, for me, if I want to store something with a collection, I usually have 12 by 12 paper and it's hard to store huge bulky rolls of washi tape or other bulky embellishments and be able to keep my paper, um, you know, nice and, and protected. And so um, I've come up with a couple of different ways to actually create references to store with the collection and then store those items in another area in my craft room. So I want to kind of go through some of those ideas on how you can create a reference and actually put it in with your collection. And then I'm going to also talk a little bit about uh, just storing bulky uh, embellishments like washi tape, ribbon, twine, and just different things like that. Uh, so let me start off by talking a little bit about the washi tape. And I do have other videos on my YouTube channel on organizing washi tape. Uh, I probably have, I think, probably four or five videos on organization for washi tape. And um, one of the reasons why I have that is because I am obsessed with washi tape. I love washi tape as much as I love paper. <laughs> and the only thing I have more of in my craft room is probably paper. <laughs> so I have a ton of washi tape and I did um, a bunch of videos on how to store and organize it. Uh, but I've come up with some uh, other ideas uh, since then. And... Uh, at one point, a few years ago, I was not storing collections together um, because um, I just had this idea that everything that was a type, like washi tape should be stored with washi tape, everything that was a brad should be stored with brads. And so I had everything separate in my craft room. And as I was working on projects, I realized that I, was, I wasn't utilizing the embellishments I had because I didn't have them with the paper where I could just easily grab that paper and all those embellishments and work on a project. And so I've been going uh, through the last couple of years and uh, putting all of my paper collections uh, into uh, storage and then uh, organizing my embellishments and putting the embellishments in with those paper collections. So it's an ongoing process. I'll share a little video clip here of um, my paper collections, how I store my scrapbooking collections. I have a Calyx unit and I have them all stored in different uh, pockets and uh, project folders. And, and uh, depending on how big of a collection it is, I use a different type of um, folder or <laughs> sleeve or something to store it in. So if you want to know more or see more about scrapbooking collections and how I organize those, I do have a video on my YouTube channel where I shared how I do that. And I'll put links to all of these uh, organization videos that I mentioned in the description of this video below. Okay, so, um, okay, so, uh, <laughs> okay, so to put my embellishments in with my paper collections, I don't want to put anything in there that's bulky. So, for example, with this um, washi tape, I have started creating reference cards. And so I think the, the whole idea around storing bulky embellishments that works for me is either creating some kind of a reference or creating some kind of a sampling that I can put in with that collection so that I know that I have that available and I know where it is in my craft room so that when I pull that collection out, I can uh, then go and pull the, those other things. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways that you can create a reference. So one way you can create a reference is just by taking the packaging. Like for instance, this washi tape is from Maggie Holmes Kingdom Gardens collection. Uh, I can just cut the back of this off and just put this package, this uh, packaging in with my paper collection. And that way, as I'm working with that collection, I can see that I have washi tape and uh, the washi tape here is shown in this picture. Now, sometimes uh, when you get this washi tape, it doesn't have the picture of these um, of the washi tape on it. It doesn't, you know, anywhere. It's just a branding on the back. So in those cases, what I will do, what I started doing was to create a card like this. This is an, a piece of plastic acetate and I just uh, cut it in different sizes. I think this is probably about a, looks like about a two and a half by four and a half. I also have these which are uh, like a two by 
six or two by yeah two by six so you can you can do these in in different uh, sizes um, just whatever works for you uh, but I would just take my washi tape and just um, put a strip of washi tape all along this piece of acetate and then put a label on it so I know what collection that came from okay and then I would just put this in with my paper collection and then I would put my rolls of washi tape in with my other washi tape and have it labeled over there as well okay so I started uh, doing this and um, I also have I create two cards one I keep here and then the other one I keep with where I store the washi tape so I can have a reference there as well if I'm just going straight to the washi tape I can go there and I know exactly what these rolls of washi tape go with what collection they go with and if I go to the collection and I look through my embellishments I have this reference card that I can use uh, to know that I have washi tape and what the washi tape looks like. Now you could create these reference cards using a cardstock, like a white cardstock, but I actually like to use the acetate because you could use this as a tool as you're working on your project. If you want to see what this washi tape is going to look like when you lay it on top of your paper, if you have the clear backing, then you can see exactly what the washi tape will look like. Because if you put washi tape on a white cardstock, it becomes, um, it, it looks different and a, a lot of times it's funny if you want to make this not as transparent uh, I would put the washi tape onto white cardstock and then cut it out with my paper trimmer and it's a totally different look than just putting the washi tape directly onto your project so I think uh, it's fun to have this as a reference to be able to see uh, with the clear backing how this washi tape will look on your project okay so when I'm, I'm doing this <laughs> I actually, as I'm going through and organizing, I come up with ideas midway through. <laughs> and so um, midway through organizing the washi tape and having all these cards that I created to put in with my collections, I, I decided that I would create a whole nother card here and I would put it on this ring, this uh, binder ring, and keep it with my um, close to my workspace. So if I'm working on a project, I can just quickly flip through here and be able to see different washi tape. Um, so even if I'm not working with the Maggie Holmes Market Square collection, I might uh, want to use this green and pink polka dot uh, on something else. So in that way, I can still use this washi tape with other projects, but I can also know that I have it when I'm working with the collection. And this is a little bit of work. It does require some effort to create these reference guides and reference cards but it really is worth it in the long run uh, to be able to find your supplies when you want to work on your project. And so for me, it's really beneficial to spend the time organizing and creating reference guides to be able to have this available when I'm crafting so that I don't have to spend time looking for things and I can spend time actually working on my project. So my goal in organizing and creating these reference guides is to be able to know where to find things and also be able to know where to put them away. <laughs> Because one of the things that happens when we have a craft room, you're working on a project, when you finish working on that project, if those things that, you're, that you used for that project don't have a home, uh, then they usually end up going uh, to different places in your craft room. The next time you want to use that, you won't be able to find it. At least for me. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> okay, so you can create a reference card like this using acetate or um, white cardstock and uh, do that for your washi tape. Okay, so if you have something that's bulky and you, uh, you wanna keep it with the collection, like this, for example, is uh, crepe paper from the Storyteller collection, and it is fairly bulky. I could take all of these out and repackage them somehow, but what you can do if you have something like this and I haven't even opened it or used it, I'm just gonna keep it like this. And um, then I just took my phone and I, I printed a picture, or I took a picture of this and printed it on some white printer paper. And it's not the best, you know, it's, it's, it's not a photograph. I could have printed it on photo paper, but I feel like this is enough for me to be able to know that I have this available. And then I can just tuck this in with the collection, with the paper collection. And then as I'm working with that collection, I can see that I have this embellishment it's Brad's and then on the back of here I have written uh, where this is stored in my craft room. And so you can just create little cards like this out of um, printer paper, cardstock, or even um, photo paper. And um, you can just put this in with your collection. And what I'll do is 
I have a bin or a drawer that I would store all of these miscellaneous breads. I'll just stick it in there with all my other breads. Now, one of the biggest advantages of doing this is that I have it now stored with my collection. So when I go to use the collection, I remember that I have this and I can use it on my layout. Or when I'm working on another project that's not this Storyteller collection and I want to put a brad on my layout, I can flip through my brads and this will be in there. <laughs> so it, it actually um, you know, creates more opportunities for you to use your embellishments uh, with the collection or without the collection, which I think is awesome. <laughs> Okay, so the third way I wanted to share with you guys uh, was if you have some bulky embellishments like ribbon and this is uh, different types of fibers and yarns, uh, one of the best ways that I have found uh, to be able to get use out of these is to create a sampling of this and store it really close by my workspace and then keep these big bulky rolls in a different area uh, in a closet or you know somewhere where I don't really have to go and uh, see this, okay? So I'm gonna just go over here, and this is something I worked on a few years ago, and I've been using it um, for quite a while. And this is all of my twine that I have, and here's some of the rolls of twine I took out of my uh, door that I have in the closet. So I have all this twine stored in my closet, and then I have all of this um, twine, and I have it on a binder ring, and then these little plastic uh, cards, or I call them hang tags, these are ribbon hang tags. I have a Cricut file, also a, a Silhouette SVG file that you can uh, download. And uh, you can actually cut these out with your Cricut, your Silhouette, your Brother Scan and Cut. And I have uh, cut these out of the um, plastic acetate. You can also cut this out with just some white cardstock. Um, both of those would work if you don't want to use the acetate. I like using the acetate though because um, it doesn't, once you have this, it doesn't tear, it doesn't get worn uh, as you're using it. Um, but if you have cardstock, it's going to um, wear out over time. And uh, when you run out, like this one, I ran out of the A4. Um, I have um, actually numbered all of these um, rolls of twine with a number. And then here, I need to refill this. I've used the heck out of this A4 <laughs> and it's all gone. Uh, so I can just take this roll of twine and then just put a couple more yards of the twine on here and I'll have it available to use on a layout. I really like to use twine when I put a tag on a layout and uh, so that's one of the reasons why um, I love having this because I'm not really using a whole lot of the twine. Uh, I just might use like about maybe uh, that much uh, to use as um, the part of the top of the tag or maybe to create a little bow. So I'm not really using much of it. So the way I'm using this twine, just having a yard or two of this twine uh, on these hang tags and then putting them on this uh, um, binder ring, I hang this right on my Razcog cart where I have all of my tools. I have a, a metal hook and I just hang that right there on the side of my cart. So it's really awesome uh, to be able to have this close by because I would not be able to store all this twine uh, really close to my workstation, um, but I can store a sampling of the twine really close to where I'm working. Uh, so I think that's really awesome and I love having this. I also did a similar thing with some of my ribbon. I have a ton of ribbon. I've been crafting now, I was thinking about it since I was a teenager, so over 50 years, <laughs> or since I was a young, you know, probably like uh, 10 years old. And I have been collecting ribbon for a really, really long time. And I used to do all kinds of different projects with ribbon. And um, I used to create uh, Christmas ornaments and uh, little fabric dolls and just different things where you would use um, fabric ribbon. So I have tons and tons of ribbon. <laughs> I use a lot of this ribbon on uh, if I'm doing uh, gift packaging. Uh, but uh, uh, I, have, uh, I have way more probably than I can use in my life. <laughs> But I have been collecting ribbon for, you know, really, really long time. And uh, so I have a whole bunch of it. I'm going to show you pictures of where I have this stored in my closet. Uh, but what I did is I have uh, different types of ribbon here. And uh, using the same hang tags with the binder clips or with the binder rings. And I have these divided into um, different things. So here is all my rickrack. And then I have them divided by color, like this is all the gold 
I have like one for a red, pink, green. And then this is some of my Stampin' Up! ribbon. And I'll show you all where I have the rolls of this uh, ribbon stored. Uh, some of this I don't have, um, like this ribbon here. What you see here is all I have. And it doesn't have any numbers on it. Uh, but this came from the roll from Stampin' Up! And Stampin' Up!'s uh, ribbon comes with six or ten yards. So there's a whole bunch of it. And what I did was I just put um, the number here, Stampin' Up! 01 is the number of that roll. And then here is a sampling of that ribbon. And I think I just put like a yard or two on here. So um, it really does help with uh, <laughs> being able to use this up and not have to uh, worry about getting rolls of ribbon out. I just have this sampling. And when I'm working on a project, I can just take these and lay it on top of the project and just play with it. And so I don't have to roll the ribbon up onto, um, you know, a reel and unroll it. And um, it's kind of a pain. This way I can just lay it down. And if I decide I don't need to, and if I decide I don't want to use that ribbon, then I don't have to do anything to it. I just go back and hang it back up in the closet. <laughs> so this works out really well for me. Uh, I think this would not work if you're using uh, a lot of ribbon for a project and you don't want to cut it. Uh, but for me, uh, cutting a yard or two and hanging it on these ribbon hang tags works really well uh, if I um, want to use ribbon on a project. And I, I love having it this way. Um, so <laughs> I have to show you all though, I have so much of it. And I got to the point where my, uh, my ribbon that I have hanging is like huge. <laughs> and then I was like thinking, well, do I really want to do this with all the ribbon? Because um, it would make it uh, to where I have way too much, but um, uh, I don't know. I have this to think about that, but I think even just having part of your ribbon stored this way is good. So I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> okay, so another way that you can store your ribbon, especially if you have uh, just small amounts, like a yard or two of something, you don't have a spool, uh, you can use these uh, spool cards. And uh, I actually created this project uh, from Cricut as well. So I have a Cricut file and also an SVG file if you want uh, these um, to be able to cut out these. And I just use a really heavyweight cardstock. I think this is like 130 pound cardstock. And then I would um, just wrap the ribbon around there. And then uh, <laughs> this uh, right here is actually something that you use with embroidery. This is called ThreadNet. And it's intended to be used over spools of thread, uh, even like the big uh, machine uh, embroidery thread, the big spools. And um, it's a way to help with uh, the, uh, when, it, when the thread goes from the spool onto the machine to keep it even and not to get it tangled up. But what I found was um, I actually started using this to organize my ribbon because um, you can put it on, it's really easy to put on and take off. And um, the only downside is over time, it does kind of stretch out, uh, but it's much better than anything else I have found for being able to keep the ribbon on here. And I don't have to use pins or tape or anything like that. And um, I'll see if I can find where you can uh, get this on Amazon. I did a video a long time ago where I shared the tip on this uh, thread net. It's called thread net. Um, and I don't know if those items are still available from Amazon. So I'll probably go out and look to see where I can find this on Amazon. And I'll put a link to where you can find that. But it's called thread net and it's for embroidery thread. And uh, you can use this also by, um, it comes in pieces, like um, pieces like this. It's like about, uh, I don't know, an inch and a half by six inches, where it comes in a big, uh, like long, windy, um, where it does, it's never ending, just shoved into a bag. And you can just clip off the amount you want. So if you want to go around a ribbon spool, you can just cut it to the width of that and wrap it around. So these are three different ribbon spools that I have. Each one of them are different size. And you can see that I have the thread net on all three of these. And uh, so you just want to, uh, cut the thread net to the uh, width of your roll and then you can just put that on there and that way you can keep this little ribbon from coming off the roll and it's really easy to take off and put back on. I think one of the biggest things for me is sometimes when I'm working on a project I take this off and then I can't find it. <laughs> it floats around in my craft room so <laughs> 
But as, as long as you put it back on there and you don't lose it, then uh, you can keep reusing this over and over again. And uh, we can just take it off and put it back on and it keeps your spool from unwinding. So it's super cool. <laughs> so I love uh, having that like that. And uh, one of the things that I have a lot of that I have not done too much with, I have this yarn, it's like fibers. I got this on clearance. I have all kinds of different ones and I usually use this for crochet or knitting and stuff, but uh, I don't do either crochet or knitting. <laughs> but at one point, uh, these fancy fibers were really popular with uh, paper crafting and using on cards and, and scrapbooking. And so um, I had just kept picking these up as I saw interesting ones in the store. Anything that was on clearance, I would just go and look at it. And um, so I have actually gifted some of this to uh, a couple of my friends, Joanne over at uh, Joanne Bartell. She has a YouTube channel and also uh, Rosalie Duong over at Can't Wait to Plan. And uh, I just used a spool um, card like this. Um, and I put a couple of yards of each twine on here and uh, sent that to them as a gift. So it's really a lot of fun. If you see one that you really like, just buy it. And then you can share it with all your friends. But isn't this pretty? <laughs> I just love this. It's sparkly. It's all different pastel colors and super pretty. And um, so I haven't done this for myself, but eventually... One of these days, I'm going to uh, cut out some more of these spools cards and put some of this on there for uh, for myself so that I'll remember to use this because this looks really cute if you put it onto a layout or, you know, put it onto the top of a tag. And I usually use my twine, but sometimes uh, if I have this to where I remember, you know, what I have and I have a sampling of it, I might actually use uh, these things more often. And so... Um, I'm planning to do that at some point and I'll probably use the same type of system that I did with my uh, twine. I'll put a, a number or letter or some kind of reference on there and then um, number that on here so that I know uh, where each one of these came from. And if I run out uh, while I'm working on a project, I can go get more of that. And so um, at some point I'll probably uh, go ahead and do some of the sampling for myself. So I also did a organization video uh, for ribbon, twine, and, um, and this organization reference system. <laughs> I'll put a link to where you can find that video in the description below and uh, how you can um, you know, create that if you're interested in more about how I organize and store my uh, twine. Okay, so I'm trying to think of the other bulky embellishments that I have in my craft room and how I store those. I think one thing I have is the paper flowers. And I have those stored in my closet and I have them stored by color and just in the original packaging. And uh, what I used was an over the door organizer. It's from Rubbermaid and um, it is really cool because it comes with uh, the different little shells and you can move them around. You can actually put this on the back of a door or you can put it on a wall. <laughs> so I put this on the wall in my closet and I'll share a picture of it here on the screen. Uh, but I have all my flowers uh, there, some of them loose flowers in jars by color, and then I have uh, some that just were in the different packages. I also have a lot of white flowers, and I bought these white flowers when they were on clearance because um, one of the things I think that's really fun is if you have something white in your craft room, you can always add color to it. And so I had watched someone's videos where they took white flowers and they painted them. So. Uh, I had uh, found a bunch of these white flowers at, uh, I think, Tuesday mornings and just on clearance. And so I picked them up and so I have quite a bit of those. <laughs> but uh, here's where I have all of my paper flowers stored. Uh, so something else that's a little bit bulky that you might have is wood veneer. And with wood veneer, even though some of my wood veneer came with collections, I don't store it with a collection uh, because I find that wood veneer is so generic. It's all the same color and even the shapes are very... Uh, you know, they're very simple uh, because you can't really, there's not really a whole lot to the wood veneer. I just have it stored in a drawer in my Alex drawer unit. And I have a video where I share how I store my wood veneer. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. So if you haven't caught on already <laughs> and you're not been watching my videos, um, I really do a lot of organization videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, I love organization as much as I love paper crafting. <laughs> So it's fun for me. I know a lot of people don't like to organize, um, but I actually enjoy it. 
And a lot of times I'll just sit down in front of the TV and uh, just work on projects like um, putting washi tape on this plastic acetate. Uh, it's kind of fun <laughs> to do that. So um, I just like, I think it's relaxing. So putting things in order and sorting through things and making reference cards and reference guides uh, to me is fun. <laughs> so, and uh, it's also um, really handy once you have it finished, uh, you have something that you can use uh, when you're crafting. It's really awesome. <laughs> and uh, I'll just share this with you uh, because I pulled it out and I forgot to talk about it. Uh, but I have washi tape uh, in my Alex Dory unit. And uh, I had created this reference book a while back, a long time ago. And I have my washi tape stored by color. And I created this really awesome reference book <laughs> so that I could uh, see what all of my washi tape looked like. And it was a lot of fun just to play with the washi tape to create this reference book. And um, I use an old Happy Planner because, you know, Happy Planners, once that year is up, you can't really do a whole lot with that Happy Planner. Uh, I just took my Happy Planner and I uh, covered up the tabs with some washi tape and then added labels. And so I have uh, the different tabs by color, red, yellow, green. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> it's just fun to look through it because it just looks really cool. <laughs> We have purple and then back here I have things like uh, Valentine's so this is under spring summer and fall and then we have winter and then here is uh, alpha words and then we have animals just by color also by category and uh, so this way I can look through here and find the washi tape that I want to use for my project and I can also see what that washi tape looks like because a lot of times washi tape will repeat like this pattern here um, if you're looking at the roll of washi tape there's only so much you can see of that washi tape and as it winds around the roll sometimes because it's transparent it's really hard to see what that design is going to look like and so putting that down as a sample um, in your reference guide um, you can kind of see uh, what exactly uh, you have on that roll of washi tape so it's really a lot of fun <laughs> I think to create the reference guides. Okay, well, if you have an idea of how you store your bulky embellishments in your craft room and you want to share it with me, please leave a comment on this video. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me to know what videos y'all like to watch. It also helps YouTube to know what videos to recommend to other viewers. And if you would like to see more videos and you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I would love to have you join my community. Okay, you guys, that's all I have. Y'all take care. Hope y'all have an awesome weekend. I hope to see you next time. Bye now.